introduction to Janaki at all. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, Biblio Talks, Bibliotech, and uh, the IIT Alumni Center. Uh, nobody needs an introduction. Not not many people here need an introduction to Janaki. I, I, I should say, uh, but in any case, for those who maybe don't know much about her, I'll just uh, you know go through a little uh, bit of the highlights. So she is a very creative person who is an actor, storyteller, author, ideator, facilitator, um, and she has worked in, in many movies across uh, South Indian languages. She's she has even been a model and she has done several uh, modeling assignments. Uh, she's a theater practitioner as well as a very successful voiceover artist. She began her journey with uh, children in 1995 when she produced an audio cassette called the Learning Train. And she is the founder of Golpo T uh, Tales Unlimited, a uh, storytelling initiative which is aimed at uh, telling stories to people for of all ages, I suppose. Uh, besides collaborating with some of the leading publishers like Karadi Tales, Tulika, etc., she has also worked with educators and uh, other professional networks on using effective storytelling techniques in communication and marketing. Uh, she is also part of the faculty at the Chennai Business School. Uh, you have to tell us some some uh, something about how you you know do work there, and of course you have to tell us how you came up with the name Golpo Tales. Uh, Janaki turned author with uh, the Jungle uh, Storytelling Festival, which is a picture book for children, which is published by Tulika. And her second book, which is co-authored with her daughter, is uh, also going to be released shortly, or has already been released. Going to this be released this year. This year. Okay. Yes. This year. This year. So, as Janaki believes, a story told from the heart will always win more hearts, and we're waiting for her to win our hearts today. Oh, <laughs> that's a tall Over order. Over to you, Janaki. Okay. So, is there any house rules uh, center? I think uh, everybody needs to be off camera because correct. this, this yes. is being uh, recorded. Yes, correct. Uh, yes. So that my uh, slides, etc., will be seen. And then at the end, of course, I would love to. Uh, have a, a conversation with as many of you. So once all of you disable your cameras, I will start. Okay. Sandhya, is it possible for you to disable? Should we do it? Should we do it? Senthil, is it possible for you to do it? No, uh, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can disable everybody and I can enable mine if you want. There's a little icon. Ah, yes, perfect. Okay. No? No. We can start. Yeah. Okay, now, just a minute. I have to figure this out. Give me a minute uh, while I figure the slideshow. OK, I think, Senthil, you'll need to uh, there's something in my desktop. I'm not able to see uh, my slides. Will you be able to present the first slide? It was OK till now. Let me let me try again. Let me try again. I'll go. Give me a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, slide show, play from start. Okay, can you see? Sensor? No. Ah, uh, yes. yes, it's coming. Yes. Okay. So, uh, good evening, uh, all of you. To a special thanks to Sukumari for arranging this. Uh, informal uh, talk, as she calls it. Um, so what is ideas to completion? But before I even start ideas to completion, I have to tell you about the journey that shaped me. So 
I was born in uh, Bangalore, but then I grew up in Kolkata. And uh, then, of course, Appa got transferred to Delhi. And from Delhi, I got married uh, and then went to Bombay. And for the last, how many years? 28 odd years, I'm in Chennai. Don't ask me my age. So that's been my journey. But why am I telling you this? Because stories shape us and I'll tell you how it shaped me. So Appa was a great storyteller. The way he used to come back from uh, office and tell us about, you know, he used to um, sit down with his uh, a little tiffin dabba that Amma used to pack lunch in and he used to say, come each one of you. So it was me, my sister, my younger sister and my mother. We would just go to the center table and Appa would say, what did you give me for lunch, Sarasa? That's my mother's name. And Amma would say, I give you some chapati or dosa, whatever it was that day. And he said, and now I am going to tell you how that chapati has transformed into something else. And he would, you know, this was the typical two-tire tiffin box. And he would open it and ta-ta-da! It used to be this amazing jalebi. Jalebi uh, bought from a shop in Darya Ganj. Appa used to work for Tata McGraw Hill. So just you know, the book publishing uh, company. And just below his office was this Jalebi Wala. So every time that, you know, he felt like he would just, I mean, so normally people would say, uh, Sarasa, I've just got you some Jalebi or kids, I've got you some Jalebi. But here was this man, he was a showman. He had to show us, you know, the grandeur of a simple thing called Jalebi. But the effort that he had taken to buy Jalebi. And how, how, what was Amma? Amma was an amazing listener. She used to, you know, nod her head. And many, many years later, I realized that it's not just about storytelling. It's also about story listening. And that was something that Amma did to perfection. So here was a child, a girl, who was being brought up with a steady dose of stories Stories which had a beginning, which had a middle, which had an end, which had drama, which had emotion, which had anger, which had music. Appa was a great violin player also. And he spent all his life in book publishing. So what I grew up with a lot of books, books everywhere. And he used to, you know, make sure that whatever book I even, you know, asked Appa what it was, it used to come home. You know, I mean, I was so blessed. I didn't realize, of course. At that time, you know, because you start valuing something only when you don't have it. But more importantly, both of them gave me something called the enthusiasm. The, um, the whole nudge, the, the push that, you know, parents need to give children, which I got lots. I mean, I got in such huge, large measure. It was about attending every single competition. It was going to debates. It was going to elocution competition. It was going for Carnatic music competition. It was going for light music competition, guzzle. Because Appa said every experience, every, every competition will give you an experience which you will cherish for a lifetime and forget about winning. It's not about winning. But that also got completely ingrained in me. And I, I realized that I've been blessed by, you know, again, while growing up, I know I used to shy away from music classes. But today I feel that that kind of music uh, taught me so much, gave me so much more to even learn to appreciate. So I'm going to show you, uh, since I've told you so much about my Amma and Appa, I'm going to show you how they look. So that's me with my appa and that's uh, me with my amma. If you notice uh, this, it's been taken from an age old <laughs> album. If you notice, this is my Kolkata home. Uh, it was in Baliganj. <clears throat> Sorry, it was in Purnadas Road. Um, if there are any Kolkata Tamilians or Kolkata people in the audience, they'll know it near Purnadas Road. And this is, of course, uh, amma. And I think in those days itself, it was like, first I'll hold, 
you take picture then you hold i'll take picture so and then this is what i always wanted to be i wanted to be like my appa who learned a new word every day who learned a new word every day and made sure that he put it in his memo because he had a typewriter he was a he was a one man army he used to work for tata megra hill from uh, you know the uh, in kolkata and then of course he didn't have an office space there but every day he used to feel he used to sit with the dictionary and learn something and you know i i learned words like uh, uh, god speed and all from him because he used to use those words and then i also wanted to be like my amma my amma who is so passionate who is so gentle who is i all i always call her the angel unfortunately both of them are not around i mean uh, not here to bless me but they're always there they're always there looking up because these stories these are the little values uh, little, little little things you know of appreciation of enthusiasm of pushing me to say that it's okay you don't have to win a prize you don't have to do anything these are the stories that have really shaped uh the person that i have come to today so what is this creating a new character so uh in 2014 um uh, there was a eureka moment i was uh, working for a corporate and uh, um i had a storyteller visit our office uh, geeta ramanujam and uh, she started uh, sharing a story we were it was part of you know ideas outside uh, what was happening and you know how in corporate we could always look at the world outside and learn a lot and i was so taken in by the way she was uh telling stories and immediately um approached her i went and uh learned uh, storytelling from her institute called kathalaya in bangalore uh, previous to that i was already doing a lot of storytelling with good books sandhya rao is in the audience she will know um we used to do these sing along and we used to have stories and songs for independence day for pongal for vinayak chaturthi then from good books it also uh, i also uh, went to hippo campus and um, you know it was it was uh, it was really fun but my, i had my corporate job and this was all uh, during the uh, weekend but after i attended uh, kathalaya and i said okay i need to start an initiative i started it uh, just I, i said golpo why golpo sukumari wanted to know why golpo that was the first thing that came to me because i still love the language bengali i i still speak the language and i said kahani golpo golpo is very very close and i said let me call it tales unlimited because tales can be for children tales can be for adults tales can be in corporates at that time i was focused only on children so i started uh, um, uh, sharing stories every sunday uh, i think two sundays a month and i started with two children right here in my home and they started coming and i we used to draw uh, one was manas and one was uh, um samir uh, shravan shravan one was uh, manas and one was shravan and um, i slowly uh, the word got out and they said why i would also like to join my daughter my uh, son and then i went to a school run by my friend and she said hey why don't you come here and start doing your sessions one of the sessions as you know children started coming every sunday one of the boy um yeah i think samarth he he said uh, auntie i want an ostrich story tomorrow i mean the next class and i said sure why not so i came back and uh, of course mata pita google devam i opened google but i didn't get the kind of a story that i would like to perform because in my performance there's a lot of animation there's a lot of uh, movement there's lots of you know drama and uh, I, i i didn't none of the stories resonated with my style and i decided uh, all right um, i i told him that you know don't i didn't get and suddenly somewhere i think he and another boy they said i think we can write it so i said yes why not and that's how it all started i think it was in 2016 or uh, 16 or something that this happened and then we i had 
this Ostru uh, character that was also given to me by them. And uh, then there was a best friend called Mia. And I said, all right, fine. I thought it's a picture book. I mean, we can just create a picture book, right? I mean, you need some pictures, which anyway an illustrator would do. And I just have to give some dialogues. <laughs> it was far from easy. I wrote and wrote and I wrote so much. And that's when I realized that this was not going anywhere. I, I started sharing it with my daughter, with her friends and all. It was nice, but it was not really, you know, uh, I mean, it was okay. And I didn't even realize, uh, I didn't even know who would, you know, go and publish it. And then a workshop happened. Kara Details uh, informed that they're going to do a workshop, a picture book workshop. And uh, Shobha Vishwanath, uh, the owner of Kara Details, I mean, we had started, you know, I had started performing their books by then. She said, why don't you uh, join since you have a story and maybe we can look at it and all. And that's when I realized I entered into the realm of picture books. I realized there's so much that it takes to publish a picture book, to write a picture book, to visualize a picture book. How do I balance? How do I balance? What is my character? How does my character look? What does my character speak? What is his journey? What is his backstory? All I knew that this was an ostrich called Ostru. And I knew that Ostru stammers. And then, you know, it's, it's a festival in the jungle. It's a storytelling festival in the jungle. That's when I realized there's a lot of balance that you need to have between you, you can't tell it all. You sometimes have to show and tell. You have to build the narrative. You have to have the character, characterization bang on. You should have empathy. You Whatever it is that the story is. And who is your target audience? Is it little children? Is there an age group? So many questions. And after three days of that workshop, I think I said, okay, I now know a little bit more. And then thrashed it and, you know, went back and forth and all. And finally, I submitted the manuscript, I think, in 2018, uh, beginning or something to Tulika. And uh, Tulika said yes. And I was elated. But I, because as a storyteller, I, I perform a lot of songs. I had to put songs also in the book, which I did, and it becomes a, the turning point in the book is these songs. So let me show you the, the book. That's my book, The Jungle Storytelling Festival. This is Inside Tulika, and as you can see, it's published in nine languages. This was like the day I got my hand on the book, this picture was taken. It's a very, very special picture for me. Central, there are people waiting in the lobby. It says, I mean, I keep getting these. Uh, please just look into it. Thank you so much. Now, I have to show you the book. I have it here. Now, Ostro, the only thing that I had for the illustrator uh, suggestion, you know, because I was the first time author and I didn't know whether I would be able to sit down with the illustrator, but it wasn't like that. Um, I, I just had a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, one point that I wanted everybody uh, in Tulika to know that people have to feel for us through the ostrich and people have to feel that, oh, why don't we give him a chance? So, I'm just going to show you a few pages. And this is, of course, Ostru is sad because he's made fun of. He's not allowed to, you know, um, tell his story because he stammers. He's going to take a long time. And uh, he's again, he's again really sad. Then these are, there are a lot of stories. It's a jungle storytelling festival. So there are a lot of stories within the story, you know. So there's the lion and the mouse and... Uh, there's the monkey and the crocodile and so on. And this is the turning point. Ostru on the on day one, when he sees all his friends telling the story, he's, he's really uh, saddened. And 
The second day, he doesn't want any of his friends to see him cry. But if you can see closely, there is, there is a family there. There's Mama Mouse and Ellie and Melly. And I'm going to perform a little bit and sing. Mama Mouse says, why are you crying, Ostro? And Ostro says, I, I, I want to tell my story in the jungle storytelling festival. No one is allowing me to. Oh, no. Ellie and Melly, would you like to sing that happy song and cheer Ostro? Of course. And they start to sing. It's a happy, happy, happy song. Let's all sing along. It's a happy, happy, happy song. Let's all sing along. When the sun smiles, it's sunshine. Say, e, 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 e. When the moon smiles, silvery bright. Say, e, 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 e. It's a happy, happy, happy song. Let's all sing along. Ostru, I know you know this song. Why don't you sing along? M me? S sing? Okay. It's a happy, happy, happy song. Let's all sing along. When the sun smiles, it's sunshine. Say, e, 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 e. When the moon smiles, silvery bright, say, e, 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 e. It's a happy, happy, happy song. Let's all sing along. Did you see that? You didn't stammer when you sang. Really? Oh, yeah. I now know what to do. Thank you, Mama Mouse. Thank you, Ellie and Millie. Bye. And so you realize that a book gets completely transformed when I perform it. I use the maraca because the tale is set in Africa. And of course, I, um, I got this puppet made. Um, it was one of the friends in Vizak who said, I'd love to make an Ostru. And I said, of course, why not? And this Ostru sometimes, you know, says a lot of things which I am unable to, you know. We, we have a conversation during storytelling sessions uh, for schools. So you see what started as, a, as an idea went on to so many avatars. It took so many shape before it came. And even after it became a book, it continues to take new forms. And I'll tell you how. Because every time I perform, it's different. Every time I, there is something else that prompts me to do something. It's, see, storytelling cannot be rehearsed. It can be practiced. It can be, you know, it's, it's not to a perfect script because many a times you're performing to a folk tale, you're performing uh, a book where you take the essence of it and you make it your own. And in this case, it's my own book. And when I, when I share it, it, it becomes completely very, it, it goes to another level. It, it uh, you know, embraces. And right now we are all in a virtual world. I have performed this in Tamil. I have performed this in Hindi. It, it, it's, um, it amazes me when, when, you know, there are children who are able to empathize with us through. And uh, most of my sessions I perform and then ask them whether they would like to see the book. Because ultimately, you know, uh, we, we would like to raise readers. We would like people to, and especially this group, which I'm sure is all for it. We want be children to read more and more. So that was my idea to completion story as far as uh, my children's book is concerned. The second one, which uh, I wanted to share, reimagining a mythological character. And this is a monologue that I wrote. And this is uh, what I perform. I'm just sharing a, um, you know, one of the advert, um, which was, uh, uh, this is called The Other Sita. And uh, let me tell you more about it. So here again, <laughs> there's a story. 
So when I was young, I don't know who it was, a lady asked for my name. I told her my name is Janaki and she said, oh. So I had never heard somebody say, oh, to, so I, I must have been, you know, I mean, I, at least I remember, so I was not very young. Um, and uh, I remember my mother or somebody who was with me asking why, what that, oh, she said, oh, nobody really names their daughter Janaki. And she said, why not? It's her grandmother's name. She said, no, it's because, uh, you know, you, the moment you name a child, a girl child Janaki, she, you know, she's face, she faces a lot of problems. I mean, they say that she'll face a lot of problems. But that stayed with me. That stayed with me. And when I got an opportunity to do something very different last year, I said, I, I have to do this. And we were trying this virtual uh, world. I said, I need to know more about Sita. Sita, whatever I know of her, came to me from my grandmother, you know, from my grandparents and my mother who shared the story of Ramayana. But what um, what I loved uh, reading was, of course, Chitra Banerjee, uh, Divakaruni's Forest of Enchantments. And I'm going to read out a few things that, that stood out for me, you know. I still felt anger towards Ram. His memory was a bruise that might never fade from my heart. But I was ready to focus my energies elsewhere. I started to the ashram with a more resolute step. I couldn't control what was done to me. But my response to it was in my control. Motherhood. Motherhood taught me something more about love. It was the one relationship where you gave everything you had and then wished you had something more to give. These are just excerpts which, you know, which, uh, which I feel I just keep writing. So I am at the mercy of my memories, which break upon me endless as waves. Now these, these just struck me and I, I, I looked at Sita completely differently once I finished with that. And then, of course, Devdat uh, Patnaik's Sita, where when Lakshmana is, uh, you know, when she knows that she is about to be taken uh, to the forest, um, and then when Lakshmana leaves her there, um, she, she's, you know, she, Lakshmana is crestfallen, but she says, and I quote, I mean, uh, Devdat uh, has written and I quote, with a smile, she said, I know the forest well, Lakshmana. I remember more years here than in the palace. Do not worry about me. I'm not happy with this situation, but I accept it and will make the most of it. Thus, I submit to karma without letting go of dharma. So these were playing in my mind. And then came Volga's. P. Lalita Kumari is the liberation of Sita and that completely blew me off. It's how Sita made friends with Urmila, Renuka, Surpanaka and Ahalya. And then I said, I have to, I have to write uh, this story. I have to, uh, what happens to Sita? What is the kind of human being she is? What are, what are the different things that keep going in Sita's mind. Is she, is she happy with what she has? Is she sad? Is she questioning every single, because in one, on one hand, she doesn't question. On the other hand, she feels guilty that maybe she shouldn't have asked Rama to get that deer. Maybe if she had not uh, laid her uh, eyes on that deer, none of this would have happened. But then you can argue then Ramayana wouldn't have happened at all. So these kind of uh, questions were, you know, bothering me a lot and was constantly, um, you know, asking me to write as to what I felt. And that's when I started writing. I took a lot of inspiration from, you, you see, when you, when you write something, it's nothing is original, right? When it is a mythological character, because you've already heard so much, you've already read so much. But then, then when it came to performing the other Sita, there was a lot of, I needed songs. So I did uh, a lot of research and I came across this amazing piece of work called Gita Ramayan. Gita Ramayan, which is about uh, 56 weeks 
uh, I think it was uh, um, 1955-56. It started in April uh, 1955 and it went on for 56 weeks. It's 56 collections of chronological events of the Ramayana in Marathi. It was written by J.D. Madgulkar and put to amazing music by Sudhir Fadke. So this was about four years before television had started. So it was 15 minutes. Every Friday, people used to tune into the radio to just hear this. So I am going to uh, present to you a little snippet of, uh, <clears throat> of this, uh, a little bit from the other Sita. Sita was home. She was back in Ayodhya with Rama. <laughs> How people had cheered her. How people had cheered them. <laughs> I don't think I can sleep tonight, Sita said. And the next day was the coronation. Rama was going to be the king. And she would sit next to him as Sita, the queen. As she started removing every piece of jewelry from her hand, she started reminiscing. She went down memory lane. How her father Janaka got her from the womb of the Mother Earth. How she, she was even brought up as a warrior, but she was so gentle with the plants and nature. How she lived, absolutely adored nature. How she met Rama and how their eyes met each other and then they got married. Sita Kalyana Vaibhogami Rama Kalyana Vaibhogami And then they had to go to exile. She was still wearing all those pieces of jewelry because they said, no, you must wear those. And then she dropped the same pieces of jewelry from the Pushpaka Vimana when Ravana abducted her. And then that last piece of jewelry, the Chintamani, which was hidden right here, and that piece of jewelry she gave to Hanuman, saying, Go, give this to Rama. Only when he sees this, he will know that you have met his Sita. And tomorrow, I'll be wearing all this jewelry as I become Rama's queen. Months passed as life started growing inside Sita. She didn't realize there were rumors growing outside. In fact, she started craving for a lot of things. She wanted tiger's milk. She, one day she wanted tamarind. Another day she wanted honey. And then she craved for those juicy berries that she found in the forest. As if on cue, Rama asked, would you like to go and pick up those juicy berries yourself? Would I? Of course. And she presumed that Rama would come along with her. And she started packing her bags, maybe just for two days. But Rama can, you know, come away and be back in nature with me. That night she couldn't sleep. Next day morning, even before daybreak, she got ready. She looked at the bed. There's no sign of Rama. Maybe he had last minute work to do. And as she packed her bag and as she came to very close to the chariot, she saw that it wasn't the usual chariot here. It was Lakshmana. And she said, Lakshmana, what are you doing here? And Lakshmana wouldn't even look up. And just then, she waited for Rama for a few minutes. And then she said, how silly of me that, you know, I expect Rama to come with me to pick up some juicy berries. He has so much work to do. Maybe he, he's not going to be able to make it. And just as she sat into the, in the chariot and she said, Lakshmana, let's leave. She took one last look at the palace. A strange fear gripped her. And she dismissed it and she said I don't know why and she just dismissed it as they went slowly daybreak happened the birds chirped almost as if welcoming her back but suddenly she realized that it wasn't her usual forest 
Lakshmana, where are you going? This is not the way. And suddenly the chariot stopped. Lakshmana opened the gate of the chariot and he said, Ma Sita, he gestured to her and she got down and she said, Lakshmana, what is it? I mean, where, where are you taking me? What is this all about? And Lakshmana said, Ma Sita, you're free to go wherever you want to. She said, what? Free to go where? Are you out of your mind, Lakshmana? What are you saying? These are the orders of my brother, Sri Rama. You see, there are a lot of rumors floating around. And Sita said, stop. Stop, Lakshmana. I don't need to listen to anything. Stop saying what you are even about to say. Stop. And then she asked Lakshmana. Maza Sangha Lakshmana Zau Kothe Pati Charana Pati Charana Punabi Pahu Kothe Maza Sangha Lakshmana Zau Kothe Kathor Zali Zete Karuna Gili Tamistra Zete Aruna Pavak Jinke Zete Varuna Je Shashwat Gyata Dehu Tuthe Maza Sangha Lakshmana Zaukuti. Lakshmana, where do you think I can go? Where will I get the charan of my Rama? Everybody, when they look at me with sympathy, it hurts. It's almost as if the day has, the night has swallowed the day. And that's how it continues. All I did was give you a glimpse. And what I sang was a part of the Gita Ramayana. Um, which I told you that uh, Sudhir Bhatke had uh, given the music. So you see what, what culminates, what becomes mine is after a lot of reading and something that stays with you. We all read books. We all read so many books, so many um, you know, inspirational thoughts or inspirational short stories or whatever it is. But then there's only a few that make an impact on us. Or rather, we stay with those that really make an impact. So this was, again, a, a, a glimpse into uh, what went in making the other Sita. And let me just um, share. And this, of course, as all of you know, is a... Uh, the classic character of the thirsty crow. So you can uh, figure out, I mean, what is it about a thirsty crow that I can say differently? Uh, it's, it's very, very... Um, so I, I kept looking at uh, the thirsty crow and I said, uh, what if the thirsty crow, the crow, the family of crows, they, they get very tired of listening to the same. It's like the grandfather sitting and constantly asking them, uh, you know, uh, telling them the same story. So I came up with this uh, story, which I have written for an organization called Kriya Play. Kriya Play is uh, something that, uh, uh, you know, not only takes story and publishes it into a book, but also develops it into audio book. Uh, podcasts and uh, also dramatizes, you know, so uh, children are uh, given the story and they can take characters. So there is a um, there is a mouse, uh, which is a central character and it's called Appu the Thirsty Crow, where Appu is, uh, of course, uh, Appu and Ambu, they are uh, brother and sister and they uh, are told not to leave the tree, but then they are uh, naughty and they leave the tree and the same mouse who used to make a lot of fun of them actually helps them. And then I decided to throw in a little element of so instead of the instead of a picture and you know because these kids uh, Apu and Ammu are 
sick and tired of the thirsty crow story but then they come into a similar situation where after flying so high they are very thirsty and when apu tries drinking from a, a, a pet bottle his beak you know gets stuck and then what happens and how uh, so i brought in a little bit of uh, environment and how uh, we can take care of the environment so that uh, was something uh, it is yet to be published so i can't show you any visuals of that um, which is uh, something that i said okay if there's already a, a story how can you even better that how can you uh, you know make it uh, different and make it very accessible or make it very uh, friendly as well as uh, it resonates with the adults because you know when when uh, children books are always purchased by an adult so it has to actually resonate to the adult first um, unless of course um, they are the parents who kind of you know make the children saying go go and select whatever you want and then uh, you know the child picks up and the mother says the father or the mother say uh, they say okay so that was uh, as far as the thirsty crow is concerned and uh, this uh, final one which uh, is something that uh, it is uh, retelling some stories that move me uh, this is something that i i performed called agni now this is interesting because it is uh, a, a, um, an award winning uh, story called the color of grief is red by um, author pravina shivram and uh, it was one of the top 3 entries of the bound uh, short story uh, contest and um, i was very very moved by this short story and i wanted to perform so i reached out to her but i was not happy with the way it ended so i asked her if i could change if i could alter the ending and she was she was so generous and she said yes we had a lot of conversations i also um added a little bit of the back story the the main protagonist here is kadambari and it's her relationship with her sister and uh, so i added a lot of it in the beginning and then uh, of course brought in my songs and music i got some um, songs written specifically for ragni and um, i also altered the uh, ending and uh, when i performed i had pravina shivram in the audience and uh, you know when she um, gave me her thumbs up and when she uh, said some really nice things about Uh, what she felt about my performance and what she felt about the way uh, i had taken kadambari i think it uh, just made me feel really uh, really really happy so uh, i think uh, this is what i wanted to share with uh, all of you basically um, in the end we all uh, i think all of us uh, we have imagined something new we have reimagined something that has been there for centuries together and then we even retell something that is classic which has been told to us uh, over many many years but then when we uh, share that story we share it with our own uh, we share it in our own unique way because because of the sum total of the experiences of the stories that we have been brought up with and we have come to be so this is what makes i think each of us a storyteller because i'm of the firm uh, you know i mean some of us write some of us perform some of us i mean tell stories in corporates lot of us but all of us in the end are storytellers and uh, as the native american proverb goes the universe is not made of atoms it's made of uh, stories so i think uh, with that i would uh, like to say a big thank you and you know um yeah thank you for listening i think that's extremely important thank you we for being a patient audience and uh, i would love to take any questions if there are any we could have a conversation we could uh, maybe i'll ask senthil to disable the um i mean every everybody could uh, unmute themselves and also if we could see them it would be great 
I kept it informal because it says informal talk. Anyone yes. questions? Thank you, Janaki. That was lovely. So I didn't get this one thing though. What is yes. there? A, uh, what is the meaning of the word golpo? Golpo means story in Bengali. Oh, story in Bengali. Okay, okay, got it. Janaki, if I can add something, I was uh, really, really impressed with that uh, bit about Sita. I just love what you did. I Thank thought it was wonderful, and I think. Uh, the book club, I think, has read that book also, Sita and Urmila. Oh, really? and so, yeah, the, it's yes. called The Liberation of Sita by Volga. We read it, and uh, because we've read it, it, it made such an impact because in that book, Sita comes across as somebody who's really dynamic. Absolutely. Really dynamic. And uh, we also had the good fortune of having somebody read it to us in original Telugu. Oh, lovely. That's... And a yeah. snack in Telugu. So, you know, the, the whole... Uh, the whole tenor of the conversation in Telugu is very different from that of English. And when you hear it in Telugu, you realize it's it's so empowering. She sounds like a very empowered, uh, modern, strong, independent woman, you know. So uh, it added to the experience of having ha had read it in and, and heard it in, in Telugu. And your take on it was just fantastic. And it's, it's, uh, it's so diverse, what you've done. Your work is so diverse. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the crow and everything, especially the crow bit was so cute because, you know, just like, like you said, the grandfather is saying the same thing again and again. And it's like the crow and the water and the stones, you know. So, Actually, I'd like to hear more about that story. What did you do with it? Okay. So um, what I did with it was uh, the this Appu and Ammu are, uh, you know, wanting to go uh, and uh, do some kind of an adventure while the parents are have all gone. Uh, you know, for uh, getting getting some food. So the mouse keeps, you know, nudging them, you know, that, that little character annoying them. And these people go and they land in a ground because by that time they've really flown for a long time and they're thirsty, especially Apu. So they find that the entire ground is strewn with plastic bottles and wrappers and, you know, typically it's, it's uh, maybe a, after a game. And then there's a little bit of water in a in a small little pet bottle. So the Ammu says, go put your beak inside. So this Appu puts his beak and then he doesn't get the water because it's right inside and his beak cannot come out. So then she, this one is like petrified, what do I do? And then she says, help, help, help. And suddenly from nowhere, the same Mr. Mouse comes, this little fellow. And then she says, I'm so sorry, yeah, uh, but I really need your help. And uh, the mouse then, uh, there's a strange pattern of sounds he, he brings out. And suddenly there's a huge army of mice. You know, they're all there. Okay. And then it's one tug of war, you know. So this fellow holds uh, the crow. And everybody else holds the tail, you know, and then there is this big, uh, you know, hayya re hayya hayya ho. And then finally, uh, the it manages to take the beak out, but then all the water spills in that force. And then the my, uh, mouse says that, listen, I know you're thirsty, but I'll take you to a place. They take these, they go on a line, okay, the typical, all the... Uh, mouse, uh, the mice, they go in a line uh, in the concrete jungle. And remember, these uh, the crow has never seen a concrete jungle. They are very secluded in one tree, you know. And then they're flying over all these big uh, high-rise buildings. And finally, they come uh, to a big building where uh, the mice, then they uh, go up the pipes and go to the terrace. And there the mice leads uh, them to a big water tanker behind which there is a big vessel, like a urli, and there's a lot of water. And they say, now dip your beak uh, and, you know, quench your thirst. And then it says that this is uh, kept for us by an old lady who's generous enough to give water for us. So we come uh, almost the other day. And uh, finally, that they thank the army of mice and then uh, in fact, the crow, Appu and Ammu look at each other saying, finally, we have a new thirsty crow story. Okay, that's really <laughs> cute. 
in, you know it makes such a difference in a, don't don't really don't think about it really but we have yeah. water on our gate every day we have a bowl of water for crows but uh, you know think about it from the crows point of view yeah and and also the fact that uh, there is you know the, uh, this is going to be enacted this is going to be enacted as uh, you know um, people are going to act it and it will be given to children where they can take the role they are, one can take the role of the mouse and it will be like a you know annual day uh, kind of play so kriya mm-hmm. play will be doing it for that so uh, dialogue wise it has a lot of scope so it was uh, written in that way so that you know there's there's going to be a lot of songs then when the mice go there will be uh, a song which will take them from left to right and uh, things like that so that's how that's why it's called apu the thirsty crow that's wonderful you know um i missed the first 10 minutes because i was trying to log on and everything log in and everything but as a grandmother i would like to know how to do these stories online like you but you're a performer and you're a singer too which i can never hope to be so uh, how does one really get into the storytelling business so that we can really hold the attention of the child i think uh, you don't need to be a performer i mean a uh, uh, or a singer the whole thing is t- uh, uh, we need some tricks uh to catch the attention is is like you know uh, if you notice in the early days when karadi tales when there were audio books they used to have this cha 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 you know the sound the child even before she or he read is especially my daughter she never she didn't even know how to read but she would wait for that sound uh and then turn the book so what happens is i think we have to use a lot of repetitive words and stop and ask questions so what happened and all because then they know that you're not just reading that you're also making it a very two way affair so w- most of the time what happens is it's like a chore especially bedtime gada 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 and finish but if you stop and say what do you think and ask them questions you know and say that what do you think happened now don't tell them the rest of the story ask them and then you'll see their creativity Uh, has absolutely no boundaries they will they will come up with millions of endings or millions of uh, way the uh, the story uh, you know and not actually what the author has actually written so okay. uh, you know and then where do you think this story is happening i think when we ask a lot of questions that's when uh, children and see uh, if you are able to perform for the children meaning perform means not perform perform but you know enact it and say then i will i will tell you the story first and then show you the book there's a lot of interest because they also want to see the book or if you're just reading the book a uh, throw in uh, a song the song need not be uh, a part of the book it could be uh, something that is related if it's something about rain you can sing a song of rain and then go back it's like a commercial break no it, you go okay. out and then you come in and you go out, then there is variety there's a lot of variety in the way you tell and all of uh, us will find our own unique ways of uh, engaging with the child okay i mean these are just one I, or two tips i don't think i'll be able to do even 5% of the job you're doing so <laughs> great job great job i enjoyed it thank you thank you thank you thank you so as uh, being at the receiving end i think i really enjoyed what you did today thank you i'm so grateful thank you thank you thank you so much any other questions any any anyone wants to ask anything regarding I like, uh, just i mean having known uh, uh, janaki for a while now and having listened to her stories i think what makes her really special is that she herself enjoys it enjoys herself when she is uh, sharing whatever she is sharing whether it is a story for children or whether it is sita story or anything else i think that is janaki's very very special quality it was brilliant janaki i could keep listening i could just keep listening sandhya yeah. you're too generous you're too you're no, such a really i can tell you you made me i'm like right no i'm like <laughs> thank you so much i mean um, for all those who don't know sandhya rao's books just make us go gaga and saying how does she write so many books here i've written some three or four and 
this one keeps churning out books like you know okay you know i'll make vadams i i'll write books you know <laughs> that's how sandhya keeps and you See, know that's how that's how janaki tells stories okay she takes something <laughs> and then she makes something else out of it she speaks, literally speaks <laughs> yeah okay so now you have it <laughs> no but thank, thank you thank you really lovely really really lovely thank you so much sandhya thank you anyone else any questions any comments anything you want to uh, um, discuss with uh, janaki okay if we don't have any more questions then uh, we'll close our session here janaki thank you so much it was so wonderful and i i discovered that you are a very very good singer today i had no clue that you are uh, <laughs> such a talented singer coming from a family of uh, you know musicians i guess uh, It's, uh, thank you, thank you, Sukumari, and expected. thank you to each one of you for patiently listening uh, to my journey. And, and you know, uh, there's so many things. When Sukumari asked me, I said, "What can I talk about?" But you know, when when you are approached and when you are asked to do something like this, uh, you start thinking. You know, you connect the dots backwards, and that's when you realize. You know, so many of the things that you do right now is actually a sum total of all that has happened to you and is happening to you. I can see somebody has raised their hand. Please go ahead, unmute yourself and speak if you want to say something or ask a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, no, it was very, very uh, interesting. Uh, I have. I know uh, Janaki only from the Singam uh, movies, <laughs> so, so this is a very different character that she is playing out today. It was it was very very uh, wonderful for me. Uh, I was just thinking as I was listening. See, there is a there is a wonderful company in Germany uh, called Boxing. They have a product where they make these figurines, uh, and you you place these figurines on this little box called the Tony box, and it starts to the story from the cloud and it starts to tell the story to the child oh, wow. uh, you know it's become a very very big hit but unfortunately this company is is very very eurocentric just looking at france and uh, so we are we make some products for them for this particular product end product we make some some assemblies and we are trying to convince them that they should actually come to india and uh, because they have wonderful content wonderful stories to tell and and they could just give us the rights for uh, the india market so we will work on it uh, janaki and and if we are successful in in convincing them to come to india i think you should probably tell the first set of stories oh. uh, because why they make these tony boxes is a very simple thing you can always give it a, give give the kid a mobile phone to do the same thing yes. but it's very dangerous it's very dangerous because the kid could could go everywhere but the tony box still is connected to the internet but it can't do anything other than tell stories and and the right figurine when you put on the box it starts to tell that story it has that a story. little nice. chip inside which connects and and it's also uh, you know what is amazing is uh, if, if say i have a kid and i am traveling i could actually record my uh, reading a book or a story to the child and load it in the into the cloud and when when they put my figurine on the thing my my daughter will actually listen to uh, me reading a book for them or reading a story for them so when i if i'm traveling and i'm not home but they still want to listen to my voice to to go to sleep it's it's it can do amazing things like that you know wow. uh, leveraging technology for for storytelling so yes. i thought i should leave that thought with all of you and and uh, we'll keep Beautiful. trying to to get these people to india and then uh you you should really be the first ones telling the stories thank i'm honored so that you even thought of it like that <laughs> and uh, thank you so much you know okay, that's amazing welcome. thank you thank you thank you for that that sounds really exciting janaki i'm so glad that through a bibliotalk you've got <laughs> yeah. you've got future a pipeline of work here <laughs> yeah. really thank you so it. much yeah. and um, we hope to see you again uh very soon in uh and the center giving another such talk maybe in december for the kids um that would be really nice uh, stay in touch thank you so much and wish you. you very very uh, much much more of all of these writings and storytellings and all of that thank you so thank much janaki thank, thank you thank you thank you so much thank you sendil for all your help thank and support thank you thank you
Thank you. Thank you. Recording has been stopped. Okay. 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 Bye. Thank you so Bye. much, Jainki. That was really wonderful. You're such a good singer. Gosh. <laughs> so talented. Today